Hey guys, how you doing? I hope uh, everybody stays safe, everybody is healthy uh, in these uh, circumstances. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna do a video today. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade the hard drive of an older MacBook Pro. Uh, this particular one I'm working on today, it's a 2011 one. Um, I'm gonna change uh, the regular internal hard drive uh, to a solid state drive uh, which will make uh, the computer roughly around seven to eight times faster uh, than it was uh, on day one when you first got it. It's gonna stay as fast as uh, it is, it's not going to slow down. And I'm also gonna add a secondary hard drive uh, into this uh, particular machine. Um, now you might ask yourself why do I make a video of a Mac which is about nine years old? Well the reason is because uh, in these times I've seen a surge of uh, older machines which uh, needed to be repaired. Uh, it might be um, because uh, many people were uh, uh, many people uh, have to work from home. Uh, some of them they didn't have um, a company computer which uh, they could take home or uh, so they dig in into their uh, stash into their um, you know uh, anyways uh, they they gonna uh, start to use their older machines uh, i've seen uh, old pcs uh, old macs and uh, that's the reason i'm making uh, this uh, this uh, video now the same procedure <laughs> works for a 13, a 15 or a 17 inch uh, MacBook Pro uh, all the way to the early 2012 model uh, when uh, <clears throat> the, as many of you know in 2012, late 2012 the Retina MacBook was introduced and um, uh, in that machine uh, it's not possible uh, to do that anymore because they already come with a solid state drive uh, it comes with a drive which looks something like this one uh, compared to something like this which is a SATA drive which is present in early 2012, 2011, 2010 so far and so forth now uh, the instructions might be slightly different for uh, the larger models uh, you might have the I'm talking about the 17 inch ones where you have a couple more things uh, you'll have to um, to open up before you can actually uh, reach to the hard drive but theoretically the instructions are pretty much the same so uh, what we're gonna do right now uh, as I said I'm gonna change the internal drive of the Mac Pro with a solid state drive and I'm going to add a secondary hard drive into the machine which will give the customer uh, more storage. Um, now uh, in order to do that you'll have to um, sacrifice the DVD uh, which is inside of uh, this Max uh, because that's where I'm gonna insert uh, the, um, the secondary hard drive and for that you will need to purchase uh, something like that it's called a second hard HDD caddy second hard drive caddy uh, you can find this uh, on eBay you can find it on uh, Amazon and uh, try to put second uh, hard drive caddy MacBook because there are two versions of it uh, there is a version <coughs> which uh, I'm gonna show you right now the one for the MacBook Pro it has a little feature uh, which you won't find on the PC one and that feature is these mounting holes right there and right there which will allow a safe attachment to the body of the Mac the PC one will work as well <clears throat> you're not gonna have these two holes not really a big deal because uh, you're not gonna subject your Mac to uh, too high shocks I hope now uh, beside uh, besides this uh, second HDD caddy uh, obviously you will need a solid state drive uh, this particular one is provided by the customer uh, you can go as high as uh, 4 terabytes if you afford one they're pretty expensive though <clears throat> all of them they have uh, the same size so you should not uh, care much about the size of the drive uh, physical size I'm talking about um, and uh, any of them PC uh, SSD drives uh, will work in a Mac it doesn't have to be specifically made uh, for Mac if you want to go for uh, one which is specifically made for Mac uh, you might uh, want to use the 
OWC ones, uh, but you can go for a Samsung, uh, Crucial, SanDisk, uh, so far and so forth. The secondary hard drive, uh, it's a 2.5 inch uh, SATA drive. Now, uh, your computer will accept um, two of these drives. So I'm gonna show you there are three different size hard drives. They all look the same at the first side, right? This is a one terabyte, that's a 500 gigabytes, and this is a four terabytes. Now, your MacBook Pro will only accept maximum two terabytes regular hard drive. Why is that? Because I don't know if you could see the physical thickness of the drive. This is the one terabyte, 500 or one terabyte, which is the ultra slim one. This is the regular size. And this is a four terabyte hard drive. Uh, well, yes, this is a 2.5 inch. Uh, you see it is much, much thicker than the other ones and the computer will not be able to accept them. Uh, the computer could not actually be closed after uh, the drive uh, would be installed. Now, uh, also, just to get back to the caddy, this particular caddy, uh, it, it should say that it accepts uh, a 7.5 millimeter or a 9 millimeter hard drive. There are the ones made for 12 millimeter drives, which is this thick one. Again, that's not gonna work in your Mac. So, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get to it. And let me show you, okay. So we have the MacBook Pro right here. Make sure the computer is turned off, okay. And it's a pretty easy process. Uh, they made it actually much easier than uh, in the newer models. Well, not much easier, but a little bit more easy. Um, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver and you have 10 screws you'll have to remove. Uh, you'll have three screws which are different and the other ones are the same. So I'm gonna put them here so you can actually see them. So the one on the bottom, the ones on the bottom, the one on the side and the one on the left hand corner are all the same. And then you have three longer ones which are all on the top of your computer and I'm considering the top the part where the, where the screen attaches, where the hinges are. So that's the top where you have the serial number and everything. These ones, as you see, they are longer, okay, compared to the other ones. So remember that when you're going to reassemble your computer. Once the screws are removed, we can nicely remove the back case of the computer which will expose the internals. Now for you, for the people which uh, are not very familiar with the inside of the computer, I'm gonna summarize very uh, shortly uh, what's inside. This is, uh, this is your motherboard. That's your RAM. Uh, that's, uh, that's a memory which uh, you cannot, as an end user, uh, put data on, but it is used by the computer in its processing power. If you want to change this type of RAM, it's very easy. You just pull onto these latches, which will pop up the RAM. You pull it out, and then you're going to reinsert the new RAM you just purchased. Again, you can purchase them on Amazon, eBay, or any other uh, shop or uh, store which sells computer parts. Uh, all the MacBook Pros, they use up to 2000, uh, between 2009 and 2012, they use uh, DDR3 type of RAM. Okay, now we're not discussing about that. Uh, so that's the motherboard, that's your RAM memory, the battery, this is your hard drive, and this part right here is the DVD, uh, DVD ROM which will have which will have to get rid of in order to install a secondary hard drive before you start to do anything with any computer you uh, you must make sure again the computer is turned off and that is not enough also disconnect the battery now the way you disconnect the battery into this uh, computer it's rather simple you have this connection right here which you don't need any special tools you're just gonna lift it up with your 
nails. In the 17 inch uh, MacBook Pro, uh, the battery would be located somewhere around this area and it, you'll need to uh, use two screws to actually uh, remove the battery and sometimes actually the, the battery connector would not stay like that but will actually go something like this into the computer but anyways um, you'll figure out probably there are um, for sure there are tutorials on how to disconnect the battery on a bigger max now we're talking about the 13 inch one so we're gonna start uh, to remove the built-in hard drive you'll have two screws here one two we'll have to get rid of those two screws Once the, once the screws are unscrewed, you're gonna lift up and you'll see uh, this plastic piece which is holding the hard drive down. We're gonna put it on the side. And now, as you see, don't leave the hard drive just yet. If you pull on this little tab, you'll see that the hard drive is moving. Now, why you don't have to actually pull it out yet? Because the hard drive has this you see the black cables behind that's the data connector to the main board so if you pull on it you might actually break it so we'll have to disconnect the data cable and to do that I'm gonna rotate this so you see it better we we'll lift a little bit the hard drive and you see this black piece right here we're just gonna pull on it with your fingers don't use any tools and with the very little pressure on it the hard drive came loose so you have that right there now what we're going to need from this particular hard drive are these screws which are mounted on the side of the hard drive which are going to put it onto the new solid state drive uh, in order to remove uh, those uh, screws you're gonna need a, uh, a different bit the um, the Philips will not work, you will need a T6 bit, it's a hexagonal bit, and you just remove the screws just like so. With the screws removed you can also remove this little tab if you wish uh, this helps uh, ease uh, the, the, um, the you can you can lift the hard drive easier by grabbing onto this one so this is just glued we're gonna do it like that we're gonna take our new hard drive the solid state drive okay so as you see in terms of physical appearance, uh, physical dimension, rather uh, there is no difference between them. They use exactly the same type of connectors, that's a SATA connector, okay. And now we'll have to reattach those four hex screws onto the side of the solid state drive. Now we have the new solid state drive all prepped up and ready to go inside the Mac. First we're going to reconnect the data cable which goes just like that into the drive. We're gonna put it at a 45 degree angle so these screws align with the holes into that uh, plastic piece and then we're gonna sit it down just like that. Now it's time to put back uh, the other plastic piece, we're gonna change the tip of the screw. Uh, we're gonna use a Phillips screwdriver. Now this piece only go one side, if you put it like that, it's not going to align. So, the, you see the retainers, the orange retainers have to be, have to be facing you. 
I'm sorry, sorry, have to be facing outside. Okay. And again, um, I'm wrong. <laughs> Not again, but I'm wrong. Um, these ones, my bad, have to be facing you. I apologize about that. That's a little details which I actually never paid attention to. Uh, you can play with the positioning of the plastic piece. As I said, it will only go one way. So, okay. So once we have the solid state drive, let's uh, move on into removing. If you're watching this video to see just how to um, how to replace the hard drive, that's only one drive. That your job is done. You're gonna reassemble the computer and you're good to go. Now we're gonna move to the adding of the secondary hard drive. Now, in order to do that, first we have to take the um, DVD drive out. So we're gonna remove these cables from the main board. Just use your nail or a plastic uh, pry tool. Most probably, most of them, they won't have some, most of you, you don't have a tool like that. So just use your uh, fingers. We're gonna slowly bend this one this way so it's uh, out of our way. We're gonna remove the DVD connector which is this guy right here and we'll have to reuse that and we're gonna disconnect the Wi-Fi cable okay. now for the next step you will need a tweezer and I have many uh, many people criticizing me on, uh, on YouTube that I'm using uh, metal tools I'm using metal tools because I know what I'm doing if you don't feel comfortable using metal tools uh, by all means find a plastic tool which you will be able to use so you don't do any uh, damage to your motherboard now we're going to disconnect these two cables these are the speaker connection and this one it's the camera connection now the camera one will you grab it just like that with the tips of the tweezer and you'll push it towards outside just like this and it's out okay with that one out we're gonna remove the um, speaker cable you'll put the tweezer under the cables and you slowly lift it up now it's out and out of the way now the DVD it's secured also by let me uh, zoom out a little bit. You'll see you have the speaker and the Wi-Fi antennas right on top of it. We cannot reach to the last screw, which is right there. So we got, we have to disconnect the speaker, which is right here. We have one screw on that side. And you'll have two little screws under this connector. Okay. The first screw, it's pretty easy. Uh, to remove the second one as you see the this cable goes a little bit oh sorry okay this cable goes a little bit on top of the screw so you'll have to make sure that you're not gonna poke it with your screwdriver and move my finger out of the way because you don't want to see my finger you want to see the action here okay let me find the angle okay come on camera Okay. and this one it's out of the way now there are more screws job is not done because as you see it's just the speaker which is moving up right now we'll have to make this whole piece flip so you'll have more screws on this side and I'm talking about this screw right here and this one so the first and the second screw from left to right so we're gonna take out the second screw and we're gonna take out the first one and now uh, these screws uh, don't worry about it they're both of them are the same exact size so you can interchange them now as you see this whole piece moves and can be taken out of the way just like this okay boom you might have to slide this cable out of the rail to make it easier 
Now we can see the DVD drive screw which is right there okay right there okay maybe I should actually zoom out a little bit if this camera would would cooperate with me okay and we have this screw which we're gonna remove one the other one it's located by the DVD is right here on the side and we have the third screw which is attached right here okay right next to the fan right to the next to the cable uh, for the camera and for the speaker I'm gonna remove that cable as well and now we can pull onto this cable and the whole DVD it's coming out okay this is your DVD ROM as you see we're gonna put the computer on the side for now and I'm gonna show you because we need to salvage some parts from the DVD ROM into this caddy okay now uh, now you, well, before you do that, make sure you don't have any uh, DVDs which are stuck inside uh, or you, which you might need because it's gonna be almost impossible for you to remove it easily. I mean, not impossible, but you have to take this guy apart. Now, as you see on the back of the DVD ROM, this is the DVD and this is the caddy. We'll need to use this cable, which we're gonna just pull out and we're gonna put it right here. Okay, and we also need to uh, remove this little uh, uh, metal thingy which is gonna hold uh, the third screw to the main board of the caddy. So we're gonna remove this one. Okay, now uh, make sure that this uh, this guy sits somewhere towards the top of the DVD so don't put it vice versa because then when you start to reassemble it you're gonna figure out oops I put it the wrong way so then you'll have to reopen it up so we're gonna put we're gonna attach it to the new enclosure the new caddy one screw and we're gonna put the second one And that's all we need from the old DVD ROM. Okay. Now, on to attaching the one terabyte hard drive, which is, let me see, where did I put it? Hey guys, I'm back. Um, for some reason, my camera stopped recording. Uh, this video might look a little bit uh, cut off in the middle but anyways let's uh, let's get back to it so uh, we were reattaching we were actually inserting the um, secondary hard drive into the caddy now uh, this caddy has uh, the, the method of actually uh, attaching to the drive is with these screws right here now these ones as you see they protrude a little bit from here so we have uh, all of them they will come with a screwdriver like this it's a Phillips screwdriver with a long neck so we'll go into uh, these holes you see and we're gonna unscrew the screw long I mean enough so the new drive will fit in okay we're gonna take the drive and as you see that's the connector we have to align the drive not to the uh, board facing up but rather facing down we're gonna push it in make sure it's all the way in and now we're going to tighten these screws one two on this side it's a little bit different because you really need this is a side where you actually need the screwdriver because if you have something like that you'll have to put it somewhat to an angle this would work as well as you see 
is going in but is not as smooth as with the other one and we're gonna take this one and this one was uh, loose in the box for some reason okay just gonna make sure it clears this one I don't need to see the screw here because otherwise the whole thing will not sit flush into the computer okay make sure it's all the way in as you see the drive is securely placed inside and now we're going to put the new caddy with the new drive inside of the Maple Pro and we're gonna do everything in reverse so we're gonna take these cables out of the way okay just like this this piece here goes obviously onto this side we're gonna put the top side first okay be careful with the hard drive cable here you don't want to bend it and we'll have to take this label of the battery and lift it up just like so as you see the holes they align perfectly with the new caddy we're gonna put in the screws first we're gonna secure the hard drive one two and three right here on the top okay this one is not really aligned that well so we're gonna loosen it up a little bit from here so now both holes are aligned the screw goes nicely through just like that and now we're gonna tighten this guy up now we have to reattach the Wi-Fi antenna and the speaker back into the computer and we're gonna do first the Wi-Fi part this will have let me see if I can actually show you okay now the part which I want to show you and it's a little bit dark so let me use a light here okay now the camera is gonna try to compensate okay you see this ridge right here right right here okay that one will have to slide under this piece just like this okay let's see. you will have to yeah like this is better actually so this will have to slide there make sure the speaker the speaker connection I mean, I'm sorry the speaker itself it's going on top the holes and now we're just going to press it down just like this okay we're gonna take the two long screws we're gonna secure this piece right here one and two gonna reroute these cables to their place just like this we're gonna push it down and now we're gonna reattach the speaker screws the long one goes to the part which is closer to the fan and the two small ones they will go right here to this connector make sure with this screw you're not going to you can move this one out of the way so you're not the cable just like this okay now it's time for reassembling i mean uh, putting back the cables uh we can start from the hard drive cable push it down just like this the dvd cable which now is a secondary hard drive and we're gonna put the wi-fi cables the speaker and the camera cable just like this check your connections again 
make sure they're all snug into their place okay and now it's time to reattach the battery and put back the top case okay. we're gonna work in reverse right now we're gonna start with the long screws which goes on the far right corner and the two adjacent holes now we're going to put the rest of the screws in I'm not skipping this part uh, because uh, sometimes I have people which I most of the time I'm skipping over the screwing of the screws but sometimes people tell me oh no that's an important part I want to see it please show it so here we go I'm doing it in real time so if I say something wrong or a mistake it's not going to be edited so I'll have to live with it <laughs> okay and okay it is set properly and now I'm gonna start up the computer and I'm gonna show you the two drives now keep in mind that prior of doing this I moved all the information I had in the original drive of the Mac into the solid state drive I used carbon copy cloner it's made by Bombich software um, it is a 30 days free trial you can use that to clone basic cloning meaning uh, moving of all the operating system programs uh, personal files from one drive to another uh, in and uh, you ask me how do I clone it uh, how do I connect a loose drive to my Mac well there are different uh, methods but one of the easiest one is to purchase yourself something like that it's a SATA to USB well this is to the USB-C uh, it's not gonna work for this Mac but you need uh, a SATA to a USB adapter you'll plug in the solid state drive if you want to clone your current information prior of doing what i did to that it's gonna look like this this you put it in a usb and you use the carbon copy cloner um, you find tutorials on their website on how to do it it's pretty straightforward uh, operation uh, i'm not gonna make a video about it um, you'll find a lot of information online about that so this uh solid state drive has already the data moved and by data i mean the operating system okay we're gonna turn on the computer now uh, you would expect the solid state drive to be much much faster yes indeed it will be faster but uh, there is another step which we'll have to do we'll have to tell the computer which hard drive to use as a startup drive because it doesn't know by default right now it's looking for um, hard drives to start uh, to start with to start from actually uh, it takes a little bit longer than usual uh, don't panic it's absolutely normal we get the Apple logo and now you see how much faster the loading bar is uh, that also depends on the operating system you have installed if you have a 1010 or a older one you will load faster also depends on the amount of RAM you have inside uh, depends on the type of CPU you have and other factors now put on your password let me see one two three four well that's my password for this particular machine uh, because I'm gonna get rid of this user and create another one so what's the last uh, what is the last step you have to do before you're ready to use your computer we'll go into the Apple logo okay then we go into sorry Apple logo system preferences this might look a little bit different depending on which operating system you're using uh, but pretty much uh, the icons will be the same and then you'll go to the startup disk double click startup disk and it's gonna give you it's gonna look for the hard drives installed into uh, your machine you might have to unlock it in order to make any changes 
Okay, now let's see why is this not showing me my hard drives? Oh, come on, buddy. I don't play like that. See, you might actually uh, hit this problem, which I haven't seen before, but here we go. I'm going to show you. You have two hard drives. You have the Samsung hard drive and then you have the secondary one. The first hard drive it's a one terabyte SATA, the second one it's also one terabyte. You can go up to two terabytes. We're gonna do a restart because right here it should actually appear populate with the drives which are internal. Uh, this uh, for some strange reason is not populated. We're gonna do a restart. And See. If you want to speed up the process, once it starts, you can uh, press on the option key and then it's going to show you uh, the drives installed. You can select the drive you want to start up with and uh, that's, uh, that's that. Now, I'm going to wait for it because uh, only one hard drive in this machine has a operating system installed. So it will automatically pick it up. Have to give it a little time. Okay. Put on your password and forget about the alert that's something it's another program which is installed and want to start up in the very beginning again we're going to the Apple logo okay so as I said you'll have to go to Apple logo system preferences and then start up disk now um, for some reason and it's not uh, any reason but uh, it turns out that the user account on this machine is corrupted that's why I don't see uh, I don't see the drives so I'm going to show you onto a different uh, computer what exactly setting you'll have to do you see here onto this machine When you go into uh, system preferences uh, startup disk make sure that the solid state drive you click on it and it has to be blued out okay so it has to have this blue around it then you'll click on to restart and you are good to go okay so that's about it that's the whole process as you see it is not very complicated it might take a little bit of time but you're you're gonna be amazed by the performance increase you're gonna see with the new solid state drive uh, also you're gonna if you don't want to spend too much money on a, on a very big solid state drive you can uh, always put a two terabytes uh, secondary hard drive and your mac will be good for years to come if you want to upgrade also the ram uh, you can go maximum 16 gigabytes of ram i'll recommend you um, uh, ddr3 1600 megahertz that's the fastest Apple officially supports in the 2012 one you can do 1866, 1866 which is even a little bit uh, faster but you're not really gonna notice that much of a difference so with that you're pretty much souped up your old Mac you brought it up to speed and uh, that's uh, you know you're gonna get much more use uh, from it than you were getting before so with that said uh, I hope this video helped uh, some of you uh, I hope uh, you all stay safe and uh, we're gonna get out uh, okay from this situation. I will try to make uh, as many videos as possible. Well, understandable right now, my shop is closed. Uh, I'm just doing appointments only um, from time to time. Uh, so videos will not come um, as uh, often as they used to. Um, so anyways, long story short, I hope I helped you in some way, uh, if I did, please uh, leave a comment, uh, I'm not really able to answer your comments or your questions, um, subscribe to my uh, channel and until next time, stay, stay safe and take care.
care of yourself. Have a good one.